Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, just basically a little guide, a little protocol you can utilize for yourself or if you're a coach, you can utilize these ideas for your lifters. By no means this is uh, supposed to supplement actual medical advice. If you are actually hurt, if you are actually injured, or if you suffered a, uh, a tragic uh, you know, accident, definitely go and see your, see an ER, you know, ER specialist, go a doctor, uh, do something, uh, you know, don't watch this video if it's an emergency, but this is not supposed to supplement, uh, med actual medical advice. This is just from my experience, from just all the trial and error that I've done. And this is basically the best recipe that I've come up with in the last seven years that I've been powerlifting. And this is exactly what I util uh, utilize for my lifters if we run into an issue regarding to maybe a pulled muscle, right? Or a muscle strain rather. So I'll go ahead and get into the things that I'm gonna talk about. So the things, the two things you do not wanna do, you guys can see it on my list right here. The two things, so I'll go ahead and start with the first one. So the first one is no rehab at all. This tends to be a, a misconception, especially, this is like a knee jerk reaction, especially in you know, the general population, if you're just a regular gym goer, uh, most people that end up, you know, coming across, most people do end up coming across a pulled muscle. If you have been in the gym for a period of time, at some point you're, you know, you're lifting, your, your years are lifting, you're going to experience a muscle pull or a strained muscle, same thing. So uh, the knee jerk reaction is to take off, take off like weeks to months and do nothing to uh, to start intervention on the actual injury, uh, injury that you ended up hurting. So this is the, actually the wrong thing you're doing. Uh, this is something that I wish I could tell every single person that's ever gone step foot in the gym is if you end up pulling a muscle, do not take, you know, weeks and months off thinking that you're going to get better because you're not. What's, what typically is going to end up happening is over time, scar tissue will build up in that area and what's going to happen is you're going to, uh, you may feel better. The pain might be, the pain might dissipate and the pain might be completely gone after you spend four weeks to like a month or two off of, you know, for, off from the gym completely, just so in hopes that the pain can go away. Uh, yeah, you may feel better. Your symptoms may be feel better. But once you come back to the gym and you start training that area again, you're going to notice that the area is a lot weaker. And you're going to be a lot more prone to re-injuring that. And that can end up turn, uh, turning into a, uh, a basically something that you don't want to dig yourself into, which is a reoccurring injury. So don't do this, guys. The second thing I'm going to say is pushing through it. Do not push through a strained muscle. This can cause more damage than you would want to deal with. Usually like a grade one muscle strain can take anywhere from, you know, days to two weeks. Two weeks is like pretty damn high, but I would say no more than days to weeks. Now, if you keep pushing through it, let's say you're like mid set and you know, you strain the muscle and you're just going to be a, you know, a big gorilla head and just kind of just push your way through it. Uh, this can cause a pretty, uh, this can cause a tragic accident and you guys don't want that to happen. You know, tear, you know, uh, muscle tendon tearing, tearing off the bone, that's going to end up causing you to get surgery and that's something you want to avoid. So don't push through it guys. Uh, be smart, know your body. If you know you strain a muscle, pull back and just stop doing it. So I'll go ahead and just explain the things that I do guys. So the first and foremost, uh, if you do end up straining a muscle, the first thing you want to do is when you get home, you want to elevate right away. Let's say you pull your hamstring, you want to elevate it with, uh, you want to lay down and then elevate it with pillows or with a leg rest. Uh, up to your heart, obviously. What this is going to do is that this is a lot more effective than using ice. Ice actually slows down the healing process. If you use ice, typically what's going to happen is it's going to relieve the pain. You're not going to feel pain, but it's it's not going to it's not going to enforce it's not going to enhance your healing uh, process during the whole entire uh, sequence, right? So uh, avoid ice. Uh, I haven't used ice in so long. Like I always use compression and elevation. Ele those two things are your best friends, especially elevation. So elevate it so that way we can, uh, you know, we can 
pull off, you know, pull down and, you know, that swelling and, you know, let that swelling go down. So that way, you know, the next couple of days, the swelling is significantly reduced. That way we can uh, minimize the swell or the stiffness that uh, that's going to occur within the next couple of days and stuff like that. So that way it's more mobile and uh, we're able to get things moving again. So now that leads into my second point, which is basic movement. Uh, believe it or not, guys, let's say you pull a hamstring right away after the first day of elevation, probably on the second day of recovery, you want to start walking, start walking. If you have a local park, drive to your local park or walk to your local park and like walk like a mile. If you guys don't have a local park or you don't have a park anywhere around you, or if you just don't want to walk outside, go back to your gym, go on a treadmill and walk. Uh, don't do any incline that can, you know, that can irritate it. Uh, that's something that's probably not, uh, if you do incline, it's, you probably shouldn't be doing incline. It's probably not the best thing for it at that moment. But, you know, for real though, like basic walking is going to, you know, have the, uh, have your body start circulating nutrients in that area, uh, more blood circulating blood in that area. So that way, uh, you, things are starting to, you start gaining momentum of healing in that area. So the third one's gonna be very short. Third one's gonna be the primary movement. Let's say you hurt your hamstring and squats. You want to go back. You would want to go back to the squats probably after three days. Uh, I know most people are going to think, oh, well, if I hurt myself in squats, I'm just going to completely avoid it because this is the movement that I hurt myself in. Well, actually, you don't want to do that. You actually want to go back to the movement that you actually hurt yourself. So that way you can reintroduce some type of adaptation uh, in that movement that you end up hurting yourself. That way, you know, you're not taking months off just from squats. You're not uh, taking X amount of, you know, t amount of time because you hurt yourself in squats, let's say, right? So don't do that. Uh, squats are healthy for you. Squats are good for you. Uh, do your squats, guys. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, not too much. If it does hurt you, I want to take a few days off of it. So uh, do your squats. And then that goes into my fourth point, which is load management. So for example, let's say you hurt yourself. Let's say you strain your hamstring at 315 pounds. You're obviously not going to do 315 pounds because you're compromised. You have a compromised, uh, you're not 100%. You're like maybe 70%, right? So with load management, instead of it being 315, you want to pick an appropriate load. An appropriate load would probably be somewhere anywhere from, let's say you take 315. 315 is 100%, right? Let's say you want to do like 60%. 60%, I don't know, my math's terrible. Let's say that's like... 60% would probably be like maybe like 170, 175, something like that. Pick a pick an appropriate weight and do it for X amount of times. I would say, you know, do it for a good amount of volume, so that way we can get a good feel and just re recruit that uh, that motor pattern of that movement, uh, and just you know, the whole goal is to keep you know improving and putting you know a little bit of weight at a time, keep increasing the weight you know one day at a time or a week at a time, right? Load of management is very important, so don't uh, don't load too much. You know, at the time, just load enough to where you're at an, you're at an appropriate uh, baseline, right? So, and then the fifth point is, which is the most important one, is the pain threshold. Uh, every rep and every set you do, you want to in the back of your mind, you want to scale yourself. You want to scale yourself uh, with the scale of how bad does it hurt from one to ten? How bad does this hurt? Do that every rep, do that every set. Typically for me, if you're in between, you know, one through four on the pain scale, then you're in pretty, you're in pretty good, uh, you're in a good field. Now, if you go above four, I think, you know, if you go up to five and of course a six, then of course that's, you definitely need to back off. And, you know, that, you know, that primary movement is not going to be the appropriate time. You know, maybe instead of doing that, you know, move on to like, uh, a different movement. Let's say it's like a, you know, it is a hamstring. Then you probably want to do like a leg curl or do like split squats or Bulgarian squats, you know, in that manner. Uh, so you know, but pain threshold. The whole goal of pain threshold is that you want your pain threshold to go down from day to day or week to week, and you want the the load to keep going up. Uh, so you keep adding more weight. Pain threshold keeps going down. So yeah, guys. So I hope that helped. Uh, if you guys have any uh, questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you guys uh, found this uh, video of value, go ahead and give it a like and uh, give me a sub, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Take it easy, guys.